When Hannah Spiegelman was getting her master's in gastronomy and studying food, she found people talked about Marcel Proust constantly. It really blew my mind in terms of how taste and memory are so intertwined and how everything can affect taste and how that can change memory. In the first volume of his novel, Proust narrator Tace a Madeline dipped in tea, sending him back to a childhood memory. Hannah can relate. She helps people to think about historical people and places through ice cream flavors. I did an ice cream based on Proust's uh, Madeleine moment. On her blog, A Sweet History, you can learn about flaming Cheeto apple brandy ice cream with chili drinking chocolate swirl dusted in gold. That one is inspired by the most written about woman in New Mexico history, Dania Tulis, who ran a gambling hall in Santa Fe during the 1800s. I truly believe that food is all you need to learn about in order to understand everything um, in this world. Great Moon Cocktail and Clam Juice Ice Cream with Blueberry Blue Corn Fleur Thumbprint Cookies. That one is for Sir John Herschel, a British astronomer whose aunt was the first female scientist to receive a salary. I could make ice cream and make it super unappetizing, which would be a statement, but I do want people to have an additional experience that's adding to the story. Um, So that's the goal for me. Proust got people thinking about food and memory. And then there are aspects of Proust's writing itself you never forget. Like the longest sentence in Proust which is 958 words. Gloria Frim is another person influenced by Proust as a reader rather than an ice cream maker. And I have a poster in my study that has it diagrammed. She's a poet and professor at California College of the Arts and author of the book How Proust Ruined My Life and Other Essays. The number of dependent clauses and digressions is phenomenal. I tried to take a picture of it to show it to you, but it doesn't photograph properly (laughs) because, you know, the print is so tiny. Gloria says because our minds can't retain big chunks of text or digressions, reading Proust feels new every time. In the mid-80s, she picked up the second volume of In Search of Lost Time while waiting for her baby to arrive. I actually tried to read Proust to her and she cried mercilessly. (laughs) She wasn't interested in the beautiful sentences. Gloria's students rarely make it past the first volume. You have to be ready for Proust. Fifteen years later, she read the novel with a group of other writers, and that time around, she fell in love. What else can I say? There's no other word for what happened. I didn't want to read anything else. She took Proust to Mexico, Spain, the Bahamas, the East Coast, and that is how Proust ruined her life. It created this habit of focusing on one writer. Some folks come and go, not Proust. She says he's a paradise of language. All you have to do is love. You don't have to um, be an academic and you don't have to be analytic because he does enough of that for you. (laughs) And so it makes sense to end this report with some Proust and a classic 599 word sentence. Here we go. but I had seen first one and then another of the rooms in which I had slept during my life. In the end, I would revisit them all in the long course of my waking dream. Rooms in winter, where I'm going to bed. I don't think uh, any of our contestants this evening have succeeded in encapsulating the intricacies of Proust's masterwork. For Philosophy Talk, I'm Holly J. McDeed.